Sounds good. OK, so in three, two. Good afternoon. I now call to order the meeting of the Equity Committee for Thursday, April 21st, 2022. In accordance with board policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Ms. Fast, please call the role of the board members to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Ms. Scott. Dr. Hager. Present. Ms. Jose. Ms. Rowe. Present. Mr. Thomas. Here. Thank you. And Ms. Fast, please call the role of the staff members on the committee participating in today's meeting. Dr. Yarborough. Mr. Handy. I think Mr. Handy, your microphone might be muted, but I I'm can't. sorry. Thank you, Ms. Fast. I, I am here. I'm present. Thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Fast, please call and note the names of any additional staff members participating in the meeting. Ms. Franklin. Here. Ms. Miller. Present. Ms. Hamill. Present. And Mr. Jackson. Present. Thank you. Great. And are there any other members participating on the call that have not been named? OK, so um, I think we can jump into the agenda, so I'll turn it over to Mr. Handy, who will introduce the presenters for our first agenda item, which is new business. All right. Thank you, Dr. Hager. So this evening, uh, I'm very excited to have uh, two of our middle schools who will be presenting on a program. It's actually a statewide program uh, initiative, if you will, from the Maryland State Department of Education. And the name of the initiative is Achieving Academic Ex Equity and Excellence for Black Boys. Uh, there is a full report that came out um, really almost a year ago. It was uh, April 27, 2021. Um, report was released uh, really with the task force looking at being more supportive of our black boys in our Maryland schools and how we can um, help them in being more successful. Um, as a result of the report, there was uh, an actual uh, grant put together. There were some pilot schools that were invited to participate. And Dr. Williams had BTPS participate with one middle school in each of our three zones. So we have uh, Pikesville Middle, Southwest Academy, and Golden Ring Middle School presenting um, or participating in our pilot. Uh, the Maryland State Department of Education wanted some of the pilot schools to present the work they've done this year uh, to the Maryland Board of Education, State Board of Education next Tuesday morning. Um, so very excited to say that we'll have two of our schools represented in that presentation. And those are two schools out of four total statewide. So we are overrepresented with our schools. So go team BCPS. So wanted you all to have a preview of this work because it is very in tune with the work of this committee. So at this point, I'm gonna stop talking. Very happy to introduce our uh, first school to present, and that'll be Pikesville Middle. So turning it over now to uh, Mrs. Miller and to Mr. Jackson. Good afternoon, Equity Board Committee. My name is Kalisha Miller, and I am the proud principal of Pikesville Middle School. And joining me today is Mr. Jackson, assistant principal. Today, we are going to share with you our Black Boy Joy and Genius at Pikesville Middle School. As one of my colleagues in this pilot program pointed out, this is not an initiative because initiatives have a start and stop date. This is a movement to ensure that we are meeting the academic needs of our Black boys. I would like to thank Dr. Williams, our superintendent, for selecting Pikesville Middle as one of our schools to lead this movement in BCPS. On March 22nd, Dr. Williams presented to the State Board of Education and discussed this pilot and the benefits to BCPS. Next slide. Who are we and who do we serve? At Pikesville Middle School, our current enrollment is 952 students. 65% of our students are Black, 15% of our students are Hispanic, 13% of our students are White, 
4% of our students are Asian, and 3% of our students are multi-race. We have 81 instructional staff members. 44% of our students are in advanced academics. 1% of our students are identified as ELL. 42% of our students receive free and reduced lunch and 16% of our students receive special education services. We currently service 306 black boys at Pikesville Middle School. Next slide. As we started this movement at Pikesville Middle, I challenged my staff to understand our why. Data from statewide assessment in math grades three through eight tell us that in 2019, only 16% of African-American males were proficient in math compared to 41% of all other students. I asked my staff to ponder this question. Do I have an equitable mindset when it comes to the academic achievement of black boys in my classroom? If I believe that I have an equitable mindset, then why are our black boys not achieving at the same rate as their peers? These are the questions that I challenge my staff to ponder daily as they make instructional decisions for the teaching and learning process for our students at Pikesville Middle. Next slide. Transforming the culture of Maryland schools for black boys is a resource guide that provided recommendations from the task force for achieving academic equity and excellence for black boys. As a pilot school, we were asked to select two recommendations to focus on this year. Pikesville Middle School selected recommendation number one, a coordinated structured mentoring program, and recommendation number 2.4, culturally responsive teaching practices. As the instructional leader of the school, I knew that we had to provide support to our teachers parallel to the support for our identified students. For our staff, we needed to spend time on ensuring that teachers knew culturally responsive strategies in order to incorporate them in, the, in their daily lessons. Our first area of focus provides teachers with PD on culturally responsive teaching practices and methods to support academic, social, emotional, and developmental needs of black boys and young men. We have engaged our staff in the following. Two book studies, additional co-planning time, AVID culturally relevant teaching training, and family summits. Next slide. Our staff are engaged in a year-long book study, Culturally Responsive Teaching in the Brain by Zaretta Hammond. Monthly, we engage staff in professional development based on chapters in the book. Each professional development session, we tie back to Pikesville Middle and how our teachers can use these culturally responsive practices in their classrooms. The teachers are divided into five groups for these sessions. The sessions are led by the instructional leadership team, which consists of the administrative team and department chairs. Having staff divided into smaller groups allows teachers to have a safe place to ask questions and they feel more comfortable in the smaller environment. In addition to the monthly professional development, we offer after school and Saturday planning sessions by content to ensure teachers are using culturally responsive strategies when planning their lessons. These co-planning sessions are led by the content department chairs to ensure that teachers are always having mindful reflections of their teaching and learning process making sure culturally responsive strategies are the front forefront of their planning. Next slide. Also parallel to engaging our staff in culturally responsive teaching, we also wanted to make sure that teachers understand brain based learning. So we have also engaged in a book study around brain based learning, teaching the way students really learn. Boys and girls learn differently, and we wanted our staff to have resources to understand how to make modifications to their lesson plans to support the learning styles of boys. Through our monthly professional development sessions, teachers learn strategies to incorporate in their lesson planning to support the learning needs of our boys. Next slide. As an AVID school, 
we leveraged the average culturally relevant teaching training to support our teachers. We focus our avid CRT training on three areas, insist on rigor, making sure that all of our teaching practices have rigor, aligning the work, making sure that educators school-wide understand how culturally relevant teaching practices are imperative in the mission of college and career readiness for all students, and advocating for students. As an avid school-wide culture informs culturally relevant teaching practice through a cultural lens, it recognizes that although learning structures differ across the cultures, expectations should never be lowered for any student. Next slide, please. And finally, we engage our families in a quarterly family summit. In this movement, it was imperative to engage our parents. Each quarter, we host a family summit for our boys and their families. The family summit provides an opportunity for our staff to provide additional support to our boys while supporting the whole child. During our family summits, parents can attend sessions on how they can support their children at home, supporting them in being college and career ready, and how to stay engaged in their children's education. Next slide. Initially, when Braylon came to Pikesville, um, he was suffering from social, like social anxiety. And it's not just in school, it's outside of the school also. Um, he had trouble making friends. So uh, um, I saw it as an opportunity for him to meet new people. Um, he was a new student coming into the building. Um, and uh, I just saw it was a major, you know, way for him to um, branch out and, and meet other people and socialize with other people. Um, and it's been um, a good benefit for him so far. Initially. Thank you. Our next, our second focus area was coordinating a structured mentoring program specifically for black boys. So we identified 27 black boys in grades six through eight to be part of the mentoring program. That included the mentoring homeroom, which meets daily, partnering with our outside community organizations for membership, mentorship, partnering with Pikesville High School, Milford Mill Academy, Owings Mills High, and Woodlawn High to identify peer mentoring for our students. These are our feeder high schools, which allows our boys to become familiar with their high schools. We also wanted to include monthly outings for our mentoring groups, individual and with other two BCPS schools involved in the program. Finally, our focus is goal setting with mentees and their families. All of these activities will be used to engage our students that will be part of the mentoring program and academic success. Next slide, please. So at Pikesville Middle School, we are fortunate to have a diverse staff. This creates opportunities for more students to see representations of themselves in all aspects of our school. They represent coaches, teachers, student support and building staff. Their presence and work in our building allow more students to see representations of themselves and increase our ability to make meaningful connections with students. These men have accepted the task to become mentor leaders. As mentor leaders, they have led the way in various tasks like facilitating professional development with staff, organizing field trips, and creating activities. Next slide, please. Ultimately, I believe that I receive a lot of internal joy from the fact that I see a lot of myself in these young men. Um, it provides me with an opportunity to shape the minds of young African American men and it also helps us to move them away from the stereotypical images that they see in the media and replace that with positive learning experiences, social and emotional learning experiences, and also provide them with the academic support that they need. So homeroom is a chance for our mentor leaders to check in with their students. This is one of the highlights of our mentoring program. Time is taken to unpack the events of the day, 
provide support and encouragement in order for these students to have an optimal opportunity for success. Students have an opportunity to eat breakfast or have a snack while the mentor leaders lead the group with prompts to check on their social and emotional health. During the 15 minutes of homeroom, mentor leaders address grades, school expectations, and provide a daily or weekly focus of activities. Next slide, please. When I was told that I was going to be in a black boy joy and genius group, I was kind of nervous because I would have to be around new staff and students. But now that I pretty much know everybody, I'm way more comfortable. And the staff in my group have helped me and encouraged me to do better in and out of the classroom. This program benefited me this year because it gave me guidance with money and taught me how to manage it. This program has benefited me by helping me stay on top of my work and assignments. In the morning, we often review our assignments and work to see what we have to do and have even more time to actually do them. This program benefited me by giving me another black male to look up to and help me resolve problems with my words and giving me motivational videos that inspired me. My experience here was fun and inspirational. It helped me bring new bonds and meet new people. Next year, I think that y'all should have more field trips and bring more guest speakers like Morgan State football team. So we have several mentoring activities that uh, were very successful. Uh, providing pro various activities is important to garner the engagement needed to push growth. On certain days, there is a focus that drives the agenda for the day. We have Math Mondays, which is about reinforcing critical thinking. This opens opportunities to expose students to math related professions and build on the math skills that are being taught in the classes. The math challenges also give students constructive ways to collaborate with each other. Tie Tuesdays is about exposing the students to professionalism and what it looks like in the classroom, the school and in the community. Service Wednesdays has really taken on the mentorship and put into action. Students arrive at school at 7 a.m. and a couple of our mentor leaders devote time before school, taking our young people through unique experiences that build on the importance of service to others. Using culinary as a theme, students learn valuable skills from cooking, meal prep, and nutrition. The culmination of these Wednesday mornings tasks usually results in their presentations to the staff as there have been many weeks where administration and teachers have arrived to school with meals, snacks prepared and presented by students. A key aspect during these days of the week is the opportunity to engage students on a personal level. It is in these moments where mentor leaders build relationships and learn about the possible issues that may adversely impact their behavior or achievement. For students needing academic and behavior support, individualized success plans provide students with target goals and to give mentor leaders as well as staff at large to support students in specific areas. Other mentoring activities have given opportunities for students to get out of the building as well as bring into our building people with purpose. During February, students research profiles of African Americans and share highlights on their achievements on morning announcements. In the fall, our program kicked off with a family night where BCPS alum Northrop Grumman engineer William Thomas had a talk with with uh, our students, which spoke to the experiences many of our students face and also his testimony of how he was able to push through his circumstance and achieve. As many of our students in this group feed into Mill for Mill Academy, we had the opportunity to see high school seniors accept college letters of intent to become student athletes beyond high school and further their education. Upcoming events include the interactive virtual presentation with the Meyerhoff Scholars of UMBC, a presentation on wellness and nutrition from Baltimore County Department of Health and a field experience to the Reginald Lewis Museum. Next slide, please. One of the most impactful outcomes to date has been our growing partnership with Morgan State University. It began with an invitation by Morgan State University to our three BCPS schools to attend their last home game. Our students were able to have access to players and coaches before the game and connect with the team at the game's conclusion. Morgan State's football team chose Pikesville Middle School as part of their service day activity and spent the morning talking with our students. 
They share personal stories, their backgrounds, as well as their goals and aspirations. Our students opened up and talked with the collegiate student athletes about their experiences in school and their aspirations as well. Morgan State has invited our students back to campus to attend their spring game and we are excited. This opportunity will strengthen the, the connection they make to what they are doing now to their goals later in life. Next slide, please. We have shared a lot of information with you about ways that we are supporting our black boys at Pikesville Middle. But now I know the question is, is it making a difference? So there are several data points that we want to share with you as our proof of concept. 67% of our students in the mentoring program showed improvement by at least one letter grade from first quarter to second quarter in at least one of the four major subjects. 59% of students had an A or B in math first and second quarter. 44% of students had an A or B in ELA first and second quarter. Only seven students in our mentoring program received referrals during the first quarter, and that dropped to only four students receiving referrals during the second quarter. We are encouraged by the results that we are seeing and are excited to continue moving forward with this movement. Next slide, please. This movement has provided wonderful opportunities for our black boys at Pikesville Middle. One advantage of working on this movement is being able to work with my two colleagues in BCPS to implement this movement. Of the three schools, one is in the central, one is in the east, and one is in the west. And this has provided an opportunity for our schools to work across the regions of our district. Thank you for allowing us to showcase our black boy joy and genius at Pikesville Middle School. At this time, we will answer any questions that you may have. Sorry, having trouble unmuting. Uh, thank you so much for the wonderful presentation. Um, I see that Ms. Rowe has a question in the chat and I just wanted to confirm that Ms. Jose has joined the, the meeting. Ms. Jose, are you present? Ms. Jose, are you muted? Okay, so we will um, get back to see there's a phone number that we believe is Ms. Jose, but we will confirm that in a moment. Ms. Rowe, would you like to ask your question? Yes. Um, yes, I was tell muted, sorry. I'm here, Ms. Um, Dr. Haker, I'm here. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, go ahead, Ms. Rowe. So can you tell me what are the other schools again that this program is at? Southwest Academy, Golden Ring Middle, and Pikesville Middle. And do we know if those schools are seeing um, equally good results? Um, my colleague, Ms. Franklin um, from Southwest Academy will be presenting and I believe she has some data in her presentation. Okay, and so is the school system looking at, <clears throat> excuse me, replicating this program at all of our middle schools if these results um, show improvements? Um, Mr. Handy, you want to jump in on that? I do believe that is the goal, um, but I'm not 100% sure. Sure, I, I can jump in. So, uh, yes, Ms. Rose, so the, the plan is, yes, that we would try to take these to scale across the system. The grant is actually going to be for this year and for next school year, so the three schools in BTPS will continue to participate next school year, and we are hoping to uh, take recommendations that are being effective um, and move those across the school system. The report has, I want to say it's, I don't want to give you a wrong count, but each school, as, as Mrs. Miller and Mr. Jackson mentioned, uh, focusing on two recommendations, there are several recommendations in the report, and I think it, some recommendations we certainly can learn from and apply to other schools. So I do, I do believe we're going to take what we learn from these three schools and, and take these across the school system. Okay, I noticed um, that you said that the boys we're having fewer referrals. And so is that an indication of improved behavior? 
Absolutely. Um, they're having fewer referrals. Um, they're learning how to um, work through when they do have a problem, their resources, and um, each one of them have a lead mentor. So if something is happening during the day, they know how to access that mentor and they will frequently, you know, go to that mentor. The mentor will spend time talking to them. So it's really been a proactive strategy um, to um, decrease um, disciplinary um, behavior in some of our boys. OK, and this is my last question. <clears throat> so in helping the boys and seeing that the boys have improved behavior, have you looked at any of the data to see if just by virtue of the school climate and culture changing that African-American girls have been able to improve as well? Because their scores are only a little bit higher than the boys. Yes, yeah, so we actually um, almost have a similar mentoring program at Pikesville Middle for um, our female students. Um, it's not part of a grant. It's just part of what we do because we recognize that in our data that our African-American girls were um, struggling both academically and disciplinary. So we do have parallel programs for them. So I would say that we're seeing positive results with that subgroup as well. They're just not part of this grant program. OK, thank you. That's fantastic. This all looks very good. Thank you. Thank you, um, Mr. Thomas or Ms. Jones, do either of you have any questions? I do. Go ahead. Thank you, and this presentation was incredible. Thank you so much, and I'm, I'm so excited to see this work being done at Pikesville Middle School. Um, my question is, so for the mentoring activities that were on slide uh, 14 or 15, you know, who is the person in charge of organizing that? Is there a specific faculty member that oversees that? Who, who are the people that do that? Mr. Jackson, you wanna talk about that? Uh, sure, no problem. Um, so we're lucky um, to have uh, an awesome group of mentor leaders uh, who converse uh, weekly uh, on the topics of hand. And so each one of our staff members that are involved with our mentoring group have been charged to, to bring to the table different items of focus for our students. Uh, and that's culminated into different activities in different areas that have engaged our students uh, in ways that we didn't think possible. Um, and one of those things that came out of that was um, the Wednesday morning culinary activities uh, with a couple of our mentor leaders. And so that's really just been a tremendous benefit uh, because having insight of different people with their own take on how they can positively, positively affect students um, has resulted in various experiences, uh, which is awesome when you have more people working together. Awesome. And how are the mentor leaders selected and how were the, I think it was 47, the number might, might not be correct, the, the identified students, how were they selected as well? How were they identified? So I can, I'll talk about the mentors. Um, as Mr. Jackson said in the present presentation, we are very fortunate to have a very diverse staff. So our mentors are all actually African-American men who work in our school building, either um, from assistant principal, as Mr. Jackson is, to teachers, um, to our building service, um, supervisor is part of the mentoring program, instructional assistants. So they all run um, the mentoring program. And Mr. Jackson, you wanna talk about how we selected our young men? Oh yeah, certainly. So um, in the beginning, uh, I think, uh, the pool was on our students returning from last year. So uh, we had a lot of information and background on our seventh and eighth grade students currently. Uh, so in the beginning, we did not have our sixth graders uh, primarily involved. But as the year went on, we started to see a need for our sixth graders um, to have a little bit more intervention in the way that these boys were. And so we had an opportunity to kind of um, add some of our sixth graders to the list in October. And it's really been a great benefit, um, you know, as the adjustment. Um, if our students are seeing more persons in the building that they can identify with and go to, uh, it really reduces a lot of problems and increases their confidence in, in, in working through the day. Awesome. Thank you so much. Great. Um, I have a few questions as well. Should I turn my camera on? Um, so this is, was a great presentation and I'm really excited about the movement. And um, I recall at the MABE meeting last um, 
last October, the state superintendent mentioned that uh, focusing on the academic needs of black boys was a priority for the state. So um, clearly uh, we're doing wonderful work. And so given that, when, when did this program start? You said this was just this year, right? That, that it was launched? Yes. And is the name the same in every school or do you get to choose kind of how, how like customize your own approach? So in BCPS, um, we all decided to choose Black Boy Join Genius. So when Ms. Franklin presents, you'll, you'll notice that she'll say Black Boy Join Genius at Franklin Middle School. So the three principals with Mr. Handy, we got together, you know, tossed around some ideas and that was the name that we came up with for Baltimore County. I love it. I, I wondered if it was unique to your school or the program. It's it's really great. Um, and how it, does this program then complement AVID? Are the students that are in this program all also in AVID or is it just kind of two separate initiatives? It's two separate. Um, they could be, but one of the things that we did, um, we really leveraged AVID this, AVID this year because um, we um, reserved a certain number of our AVID seats for boys in the mentoring program. So one of our, our AVID coordinators is actually one of our male mentors. So um, he identified boys in the mentoring program that would also um, benefit from AVID. And so they had an opportunity, um, the mentors to support them going through the AVID process and the interviewing process so that they'll be in AVID next year. That's wonderful. I'm a huge fan of AVID. That sounds like the, like I said, it's very complimentary. Um, and I just uh, wanted to say that the the fact that you've reached out to um, folks to be mentors who are not only teachers in the school, but, are, you know, uh, work in the school building in different ways is really wonderful. And I think it's really great to kind of bring that community together in a very clever approach. So, um, and it sounds like Ms. Jost also has a question. So, Ms. Jost, do you want to unmute? Thank you. Can you hear me, Dr. Haley? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you for the presentation. It was excellent. I, I loved hearing about it. But one of the key observations I, I want to uh, point out that you know folks should avoid saying words such as African American males and behavioral problems. Associating the two, those those words are powerful, as if only African American male children have behavioral problems. That is not true. So we have to be cognizant of how we even speak about our children, uh, regardless of ethnicity, that it is a universal issue. Uh, so my question is, have you looked into schools such as Perry Hall Middle School, which actually has a lower concentration of African-American boys compared to the to school demographics? And um, you know the issues arising from either being underrepresented or being um, um, treated with the bias have is there anything in the cans to to start it in schools where african-american boys are in a minority so i guess i can take that one um thank you um Ms. Jones, for the question uh at this point well i, I can speak for so this particular program i was tasked with uh being a part of it, helping to manage the grant. So when we got into this particular program, the schools were already selected by the time I came on board. As we go forward, uh, we would like to look at all schools. And as to your point, you know, the three schools we have, I know Southwest and Pikesville. Well, I guess Pikesville, and we shared the data, I think they're predominantly uh, Black or African American at this point. But we will look at other schools as well going forward. Um, I guess. How we go about doing that work in conjunction with some of the other work we're doing with middle schools, I think will be uh, some of the organization that needs to occur. But I do feel that with the recommendations that are specific in this document, we can take the document to a Perry Hall Middle to other middle schools, and they should be able to see, you know, school leadership should be able to see how the recommendations can help them be more supportive of, of um, the black boy students uh, within their school. Thank you. And are there any plans to extend this out to the larger community for mentoring? Or yep. So, um, so we do have a mentoring program that goes across BCPS. One thing I was very excited about with the three schools, um, and you'll hear from Southwest in, in a few minutes, is how they really did connect with the community. And I think Dr. Hager mentioned that. So, 
I think there's a system-wide approach, but I really like this community-based approach that our schools have taken. So that's something I would like for us to model as a system, um, you know, and taking that to scale as well. Because uh, I think there's a lot of power in how these schools went about with their mentoring efforts. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Great. And Mr. Thomas has a follow up question as well. Yes, thank you. So on slide eight, you mentioned the family summit and engage a quarterly family summit to engage other families of of the students in the Pikesville Middle School program. So how much engagement did you get from from families and parents at that summit? And kind of what were what was the focus in that summit? What were some of the topics? So we we had a lot of engagement. Um, our parents came out. We um, actually at our first summit we had and Mr. Jackson helped me with his name. We had a speaker come and speak. Um, um, uh, William Thomas. Yes, and he was a motivational speaker, um, was actually a BCPS student who was shot at Randallstown High School um, and told his story um, and how he's overcome all of his challenges to be successful. Um, and so he spoke, um, gave, um, you know, just some motivational words to the parents, to the kids. Um, parents had an opportunity to talk to the mentors. They develop a relationship. Um, I would honestly say some of our um, mentors may talk to their parents on a weekly, ba I mean, on a daily basis, depending on what arises. So really out of the family summits, what we build is that community where our parents know who they're able to go to when they have questions um, about academics, when they have questions about how can I do more to support, you know, my son in school. So I see the family summits as very engaging. Um, our parents, um, you know, attend um, and they, it's, it was probably the most engagement we've had from parent groups, um, you know, since we've been back from COVID. Great, thank you so much. Great, thank you for the presentation and best of luck with your uh, presentation at MSDE next week. So thank Mr. You. Handy. Thank you. All right, thank you, Dr. Hager. So uh, next up, we'll just move right to Southwest Academy and uh, we have our school leaders here who are ready to go. So I'll turn it over to uh, Principal Franklin and Assistant Principal Hamill. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. My name is April Franklin, principal of Southwest Academy. I am also joined by my assistant principal, Ms. Ann Hamill. Thank you to Mr. Handy and all the BCPS Board Equity Committee members for having us here this afternoon. We are also thankful to Dr. Williams and the BCPS executive leadership for selecting Southwest Academy to pilot this deliberate, as Ms. Miller stated, movement in support of our black boys. We are here this afternoon to represent the West Zone, specifically Southwest Academy chapter of Black Boy Joy and Genius. Next slide, please. Southwest Academy is a comprehensive middle school with a STEM magnet program. We have 71 instructional staff members who serve approximately 784 students. We are 65% Black, 14% Asian, 14% Hispanic, 4% White, and 3% multiracial. 30% of our students take at least one advanced academic course. 4% of our students are English language learners. 48% of our students qualify for free or reduced meals. 12% of our students are in the magnet program and 15% of our students receive special education services. Of the total, which of course is why we are here today, we have 402 black male students, which is more than half of our school's population. Next slide, please. So assessing our need, based on the 1920 suspension gap analysis, black male students were suspended at higher rates than their peers, 
which was an indication of the work we had to do to address the social emotional supports and really honing in on appealing and engaging instruction. At Southwest Academy, we began the responsive instruction movement a few years ago. The first wave of the movement was on responsiveness that was determined by student deficit skills as a whole and strategies for students with IEPs. Then the responsive movement went deeper to include linguistically responsive strategies for our English language learners. Now with the Black Boy Joy and Genius opportunity, we were able to widen the scope of our responsiveness and really look at the achievement of the Black male as its own student group. As we have become more versed in responsiveness, although many strategies are the same, there are some that are specific to each student group. Next slide, please. As a black male learner, I learn best when the teacher brings down the work, lets us try it, and shows us how to do it the right way. As a black male learner, I struggle in classes when the teacher doesn't make connections with the students. They rather come in the classroom, get their job done, than learn about us personally. If you're a teacher and you want your students to come in your class and be happy for your lesson, you can't expect us to be happy and be ready for it. You gotta make us happy. You gotta spice up your class. Ms. Hamill, you're muted. Sorry, everybody. Um, I'm sorry, can we go back to that slide? You don't have to play the video, but I want to give some context. I apology, apologize. No voice is more important than that of the student group that we are trying to support or impact. We went to the source themselves for what our black boys really need. What you just heard was a couple of their powerful voices. Next slide, please. The first recommendation that we chose was 3.1, where we are providing professional learning to support culturally relevant teaching and anti-bias practices in the classroom. We believe that this recommendation would cement the work that had already been started. BCPS has laid the foundation for this action within the framework for teaching and learning to support our continuation of creating and implementing culturally responsive practices in the classroom. This also mirrors our SPP key action where teachers respond to the direct needs of their students. Next slide, please. To kick off our initiative, we understood that setting intentions is critical to when changing mindsets. To promote self-reflection and to ground the teachers in their own beliefs, teachers took part in a four corners activity. In this four corners activity, teachers were given the reflection statements that you guys, you all see on the screen. The reflection statements ask questions about everyone being treated equally at Southwest. I know how to pronounce the names of all my students correctly. I'm comfortable calling the homes of all my students. The results were telling on many levels, and it was clear that there was work to be done in getting teachers to understand how culture plays a role in students' education. Next slide, please. Building teachers' responsiveness is a critical component in developing culturally responsive teaching and anti-bias practices. To foster this understanding, we broke our coaching up into three components. Number one, after the normally scheduled Monday co-planning, teachers were allowed the opportunity to stay for an additional hour to specifically focus on data analysis of our black male learners. Two, we offered culturally responsive Saturday planning where teachers were given a topic based on Zaretta Hammond's book, and they were allowed to collaborate, infuse things into their own lessons, and really have that time to discuss the needs of the black male learners in their classroom. Additionally, we collaborated with our AVID program to really make sure that our students were getting those college and career readiness um, 
standards and really promoting those high expectations. And we did this in partnership with Pikesville Middle, who just presented, as our AVID coordinators met on a regular basis to make sure that both schools were supporting the students in the ways that they needed to be. Next slide, please. For our book study, we chose the book by Zaretta Hammond titled Culturally Responsive Teaching and the Brain. Zaretta Hammond lays out her book perfectly for supporting teachers understanding how brain-based research is tied to culturally relevant teaching. In the first chapters, teachers learn to first examine their own culture, biases, and beliefs. Once they understood how their culture shows up in the classroom, it was easier for them to understand how students' culture shows up in a classroom. Then once that was established, we dove deeper into culturally responsive teaching by examining how to be a warm demander. So many times our teachers have the biggest hearts and they want what's best for our kids, but in order to do that, they can sometimes make excuses and maybe water down what they're teaching. And by we told that we taught them through what knowing what a warm demander is, you can do both. You can give them the emotional supports they need, but still really push them to those high academic standards. And then in addition, teachers examine the significant role that rigor plays in the classroom and how for students to feel connected to the classroom, they need to feel pushed and they need to feel like what they're doing is worthwhile. So that was another topic that we discussed with the teachers, not only through our Monday equity meetings, but also through our specialized Saturday culturally responsive planning. Next slide, please. Another way that we tried to infuse this as a whole school approach is to really make sure that culturally responsive teaching was not just a buzzword for our school. It wasn't gonna be something that we talked about this year and next year we picked a different topic. Culturally responsive teaching is truly just highly effective instruction. In order to support our teachers, students, and families, culturally responsive teaching is woven into many components at Southwest Academy. The principal's weekly staff bulletin, the Tiger Trail, in the informal observation tool, data analysis tools, quarterly newsletters to parents, at our family summit, and throughout our monthly SPP PD sessions, teachers and families have immersed themselves in culturally responsive teaching at Southwest. Next slide. Last year, we began restructuring our co-planning format to include three co-planning pathways. Pathway three depicted on the screen is where our teachers collaborate and exchange effective interventions, supports, and strategies that address class, individual, or group needs. After compiling their pre-identified formative assessment data, co-planning partners reviewed the data and engaged in acceleration planning using the guiding, guiding questions in the response to the data. As indicated, we have added data analysis specifically for the Black Boy student group. Then our staff development teacher compiled responsive strategies for our Black boys that was learned through the Gurian Institute that is also part of this pilot program. Then in the last part of the pathway, teachers look at what are their next steps, they reteach, reassess, and then the cycle continues throughout the year. Next slide. Our second recommendation is to coordinate a structured mentoring program. Pre-COVID, we had a mentoring pro program, but it needed a facelift. So this opportunity came at a perfect time. For student selection, we typically select students who had low report card grades, had lower than the 95% attendance rate, and five or more administrative referrals. With minimal knowledge of the students because of the COVID closure, we relied on staff recommendations this year. Currently, our program consists of 20 students. Most are grade eight students. 
However, for next year, we will be targeting more incoming sixth and rising seventh grade students to have a more long term impact. Next slide, please. Fortunately, our Black Boy Joy and Genius at Southwest Academy mentoring kickoff was featured in BCPS around the county. Please enjoy. We've always had a mentoring program, but this year we've taken it to a whole new level. So we want to make sure that we're providing our young people, beginning at the middle school level, to prepare them for what's to come. So I'm here at Southwest Academy uh, for the mentoring program because I wanted to provide that kind of support, not only to our principal and to the staff, but our mentees, our mentors. So every day they get to check in with their mentor. Mentor gets to really get a gauge on how they're doing each day. In addition to that, we do have the whole after school component. Throughout the after school component, there are life skills, and then there is also academic support. So this is a prime example of really supporting our students, and particularly our black males and our young Hispanic students. I'm Jabari Harriot. I'm in the eighth grade, and I'm a part of this mentoring program. I decided to be a part of this program because I wanted to see how much growth and perception, physically and mentally, it can get me through throughout the year, and how focused I am on my future. I had friends in this program, and I spoke to them about it, you know, and they they all looking forward to continuing this program and learning from this program throughout the year. And I just wanted to let them know that, you know, whatever it is throughout the program, we all sticking together as black males, strong, independent males, and, you know, better days to come. Next slide, please. During the reception, we had breakout sessions for students and their families. The family session was called Raising Joy and Genius. During the family session, we provided a survey so families could provide insight about their young men's sense of belonging, feeling respected, and their value on education. The families provided us insights based on the question, identify your son's opportunities for improvement. Their responses included topics such as self-advocacy, listening, having follow-through, and being responsible. The student session was called Living Joy and Genius, where they engaged in a kickoff activity that allowed them to identify characteristics of a positive role model, and then reflect on the anchor question, how can the positive qualities of your role model help you accomplish your goals in life? Dr. Williams gave inspirational remarks at the beginning of the program, specifically geared toward our mentees. We ended the night with the Black Boy Joy and Genius at SWA Pledge, followed by motivating words from our own Mr. Doug Handy. Next slide, please. The mentees begin their day with an SEL daily check-in during the mentoring homeroom. We also have weekly hour and a half mentoring sessions on Wednesdays. Our male teachers signed up to facilitate the sessions with our coordinator. Each session begins with an SEL check-in. Students play Math 24 and engage in hands-on activities for the book study of the text Miles Morales. The mentors also facilitate one-on-one -on -one reviews of students' individual academic success progress sheets. And at interim time and at the end of each quarter, they facilitate sessions on academic goal setting. 
The second portion of the session is with our community partners, specifically Minister Nate Lucas of Royalty Youth Ministry of one of our partners, Morning Star Baptist Church. BCPS is also fortunate to be in partnership with the Baltimore County Police Department. So we have school resource officers in our secondary schools. One of our mentors is SRO Kawan Young, who serves in our direct feeder school, Woodlawn High School. Officer Young is also the founder of Save Our Young Soy Baltimore, which is an evidence-based mentoring program. They work with the students on life skills support, like career exploration, conflict resolution, mindfulness, safe interactions with law enforcement, social media expectations, and spiritual well-being. One of the major cells of the program is the opportunity to take learning out of the building. Pikesville Middle School, one of our mentoring program partners, arranged for our groups to attend a Morgan State University football game, followed by a meet and greet with the players. Now that it is safer to go on outings and fellowship outside of the school building, we look forward to more learning opportunities, such as our scheduled production learning session at the BCPS TV studio. Next slide, please. Here are testimonies about the impact Black Boy Joy and Genius at Southwest Academy has had on students in school and at home. Black Boy Joy and Genius has helped me be motivated and going hard for my work so I can achieve my goal to be a football player or an architect. Black Boy Joy and Genius has helped me have good relationships with my teachers and they motivate me to come to school every day so I am able to accomplish my dreams by being an NFL superstar. Being a mom of a student of the Black Boy Joy program, I've seen my son come from an alternative school to now here where he is thriving and he's on a roll. He loves going to class because the teachers are listening to his input. He gives suggestions on what he thinks would be a better learning experience for him and his friends, and he enjoys that very much. He also loves the meetings they have once a week where he can express himself, what he's going through emotionally, um, in and out of school. So I've seen progress at home as well. Black Boy Joy. We are seeing the results. We are making an impact. As shared, BCPS cho chose one school from each of the zones, and that collaboration about this movement birthed, it has allowed us to be able to share what we have collectively learned and further to share with the increasing number of schools who will be added to the movement. Because we are providing time for self-reflection, coupled with clearly defining what it means to be culturally responsive, planning engaging activities for students is evident in the classroom. We see evidence of the work in formal and informal observations where we track engagement, specifically through the anticipatory set where the hook is connected to students' interest. We see it during the teaching and modeling where teaching where teachers are infusing real world connections. We also see evidence in the classroom environment that has culturally relevant visuals and we see higher engagement because students feel like they are seen, heard and valued. Specifically analyzing the formative and summative assessment data for the Black Boys student group has been eye-opening and has made us broaden our scope of responsive instructional strategies. Teachers are using group activities with healthy competition. They are incorporating Black histories, other stories, and puzzles. We are still a work in progress. We have to see these fruits translate to the summative assessments. In addition, the connection among the mentees, their mentors, and staff is strong. I have seen the young men hold each other accountable and support one another when needed. Behavioral referrals have decreased. 
the mentees are running to show me their report cards and are able to provide me and articulate a plan when I see a low grade because I certainly ask what the plan is and they are able to readily answer. Next slide, please. This is our team of educators at Southwest Academy who are directly involved with our Black Boy Joy and Genius at Southwest Academy. We have a dynamic team and we are passionate about the work because we want to interrupt the negative trends for suspensions and the low achievement data for our Black boys. Next slide, please. Again, thank you for your time and attention, and we thank you for this opportunity to pilot the Black Boy Joy and Genius movement. Now we will take any questions you may have. Okay, and I guess I will facilitate any questions that board members might have. So are there any questions from Ms. Rowe or Ms. Joes? No, thank you. Okay, Ms. Joes. Okay, and then while I have a quick question, um, we saw a, a a quick snippet from a parent who was talking about the uh, the progress they've seen for for their a child in the program. And I'm wondering how much community engagement um, from parents, from families, have you had with the mentorship program um, at Southwest? Well, I'm going to start with the actual mentorship program, and then I'm going to roll it over to Ms. Hamill, who can tell you more about the Family Summit for the culturally responsive um, instruction. So our mentoring program and the, the kickoff, it was, it was packed. Um, we had a full house, um, and I think one of the, the um, positive parts of that program, how we had the direct opportunity and the intimate opportunity to speak with the families to get their input about what they see as needs for their young men. Um, that was a very powerful session. Um, I've gotten emails, I've gotten um, visits saying how effective they feel the mentoring program has been, even if it's only about make, having a, a, um, a stronger connection with the, with the school, having a stronger connection with their teachers and their mentors. So we, it has been very favorable so far, and we're looking forward to continuing this work next year. Ms. Hamill, you want to talk about the summits? Sure. Um, so the kickoff was just for the parents of the mentoring and our staff and you know, people throughout BCPS, but we wanted to make sure that our whole school was benefiting. So we have had family summits or we've had us family summit and we will be having another one where we engaged the whole community and we talked about different learning styles for girls and boys, different learning styles, you know, for kids who think one way versus the other. Um, and then we also, you know, really dove into that SEL and that response was amazing. I had teachers asking, or I'm sorry, parents asking when the next one was gonna be. Parents wanted the PowerPoint that we presented because they wanted to also use some of those techniques with their children. And so in that respect, community and parent involvement has been excellent. Incredible. And you mentioned the Saturday and extended responsive planning um, early on for professional development. Uh, can, how did the teachers respond to that and how would you say that it has uh, helped your community? The teachers responded very well to that. Um, this is a year that's a little tough to ask teachers to do extra because what they're already doing feels extra. But there has been a core group of teachers that have shown up to all of them and they love it. They take turns talking, sharing stories, you know, asking questions that maybe they wouldn't feel comfortable in a large group. Mm -hmm. It has been um, very beneficial. And I recently asked to, for them to send me some artifacts of how they've turned the Saturday program into their lessons. And that's great. Those essential questions, you know, the rigor, you know, using culturally responsive um, PowerPoint pictures, things that seem so small but so significant for our students. 
Awesome. And I just love seeing the impressive team of people who were helping to support this program on the second to last slide. And I also love the plans that you shared with us about trying to recruit those incoming um, sixth graders and uh, rising seventh graders to really get to see the process unfold. So thank you so much. That was such an incredible presentation. And it just makes me so happy to see that we're doing this here in Baltimore County Public Schools. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you for having us. Yeah. Are there he hearing no more questions and Miss Joe's Miss Rowe, please feel, feel free to um, chime in if you do have any more questions or comments. Um, that ends this discussion uh, and uh, Mr. Handy, I hand it over to you for board equity committee updates. All right, thank you, Mr. Thomas. So just had a few updates on some requests that uh, committee members have made for topics. I am working with my fellow staff members to generate those uh, presentations for you. Um, I know a, a one that we had talked about uh, early on was around uh, the suspension rates and have been talking to staff about putting that presentation together. I just need more time. Uh, that would probably be uh, perhaps June when we bring that one forward. I will work on getting an update, uh, but there was some some um, things that need to happen around the reporting and uh, a new system that's been set up to help track suspensions and things of that nature. So some technical aspects need to be addressed. So working on that. Uh, another one that uh, you all had mentioned, the extracurricular presentation, I've been started on that. I'm continuing to work on that. So I know we're running out of time in a year, but I want to try to bring these back to you all before we close out for this year. Uh, the posters, uh, the posters are actually a go. So thank you all for uh, weighing in on the posters. Uh, just need to uh, get those going out in May. So I did um, already get uh, the confirmation from copy and print really before spring break that they'll be ready to go with those for May. So schools will be receiving those posters and I'll keep you updated on that. And uh, recruitment and retention was another one that came up. Uh, that one we may defer uh, depending on where we are with you know the hiring season and the data that we have on that. So I think those are the, I'm looking at my list, I think that covers what you all had asked for. Um, if you remember, there was one about um, public comment, and that's someone one we're going to really take into our advisory and have them start to look at that. And speaking of advisory, I did have one question for uh, the committee members. I need an, a date for our May advisory meeting, and uh, we certainly, especially because we don't have all members here, it might be more efficient to handle that via email. So um, we do have um, a May. That will be our last meeting of the year for the advisory, and I want to make sure we have a date. Uh, hopefully that'll work for all committee members. So I'll follow up um, and, and get that date from you all so we can get that last advisory meeting scheduled. So those are the announcements I had. So thank you, Mr. Thomas. Thank you. Um, and yes, an email would probably be the best way to um, correspond with us. Uh, Ms. Joes, do you have a question? Yeah, Mr. Handy, you said the posters are ready and they'll be going out to schools. Is there any plan to send that to the board building? If, if Is that going to be displayed in the uh, board building and as well? So I really like that idea, Ms. Jones. Um, I think the original idea was was for schools. I like your idea, um, all BCBS campuses, if you will. So I'm actually going to confer uh, with Dr. Yarbrough to see if we can make that happen. Um, Thank yeah. you. I think that would be excellent if we have that, you know, where we conduct business to remind us of what we're there to do. Thank you. OK, you're welcome. Thank you for yeah, the idea. Incredible suggestion, Mr. Rosen. Thank you, Mr. Handy. Um, and yes, please follow up with us when when you uh, hear back. Yeah, um, one thing to comment, I'm super excited to possibly hear about an extra curricular presentation before my term ends on the board. But, um, you know, if, if it has to be pushed back a few um, months after my term, I'll still come back and listen. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, Mr. Handy, is that everything? Yes, sir. That's all I have. Thank you. Thomas. Perfect, thank you so much. The last item on the agenda is announcements, and that is uh, that the next equity committee meeting will be held on Thursday, May 19th, 2022 at four o'clock p.m. Be on the lookout for board docs to see when our next equity council meeting will be held. Um, is there any further business? Hearing none, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you for joining us and thank you to our presentations. They were truly remarkable and I'm so excited to see the future of our programs in BCPS for Black Boys. Thank you. Thank you, good night. All right, thank you everyone, good night. Good night everyone.